Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here back with another tips and tricks video. And this time we're gonna be talking about setting up a reference track in Cubase. Now, um, if you're wondering why you'd wanna use a reference track or the importance of it or, or why you think you should even attempt to set it up, uh, I think it's really important to, when it comes to mixing or mastering or doing any kind of a home production or studio stuff on your own, um, it's definitely good to have a point of reference. Now, let's say you hear a mix from someone who you really like and you want to try and, uh, you know, shoot for that or have that as your goal. Uh, that's where a reference track is really important. So in Cubase, it's actually really easy to set this up. And the reason I like doing it this way is because it allows you to bypass listening to your reference track through your master channel or your mix bus, or your two bus or whatever you want to call it. Um, doing it this way uh, allows you to get a real good, um, uh, sort of like A and B versus uh, the reference track that you're aiming for and your actual mix. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your uh, audio connections. And then from here, you'll see your normal outputs is where, uh, you know, whatever you would normally have your uh, interface connected to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to control room and then we're going to add a channel. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a cue. So this is going to be running through the cue mix. Uh, so it'll be bypassing your, uh, your regular stereo output. So let's go ahead and add that. So you'll see down here is where you have your normal output. So you want to set this to output one and this one to output two. All right, so now let's just go ahead and create an audio track. So let's do an audio track. We'll call it reference. And then after that, just go ahead and bring in your, your reference track. So uh, let's go ahead and import a track. And then after that, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be able to feed this signal into your Q mix, and your Q mix is going to be over here. And the control room is where you're going to be able to A, B your mix. So you'll see down here you have mix and Q1. Uh, that'll allow you to sort of go back and forth in real time to listen to your mix and compare it to uh, the reference. And the next thing is over here on the inspector side, go to setup and make sure Q sends is enabled. So you want to be able to see that. And then when you go to Q sends, while you're in your reference track, just go ahead and turn that on. Make sure it's set to zero because uh, you just want it to be uh, an even level uh, representation of what the reference track really sounds like. All right, so the next step you're going to do, and it's a really important one, is on your reference track, you're going to want to make sure you set the output to no bus because you don't want this running through your master stereo output. Uh, and you know you don't want it conflicting uh, with the original track that you're trying to hear and uh, your reference track. So after you go ahead and uh, set that to no bus. Then over here in the control room is where you can sort of go back and forth and A, B your reference to your uh, current mix that you have in Cubase. So uh, I'm just going to play a certain part of the, of the track and then uh, go back and forth so you can hear the difference. So you can see it's super easy once you set this up and it's really helpful because you don't have to do any kind of weird routing uh, when it comes to listening to reference tracks or referencing from iTunes or anything else. I mean, there's other apps and plugins that you can use that do this, but um, if you have Cubase, you can just do it already. It's Once you set this up, you're good. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So uh, it's really quick, uh, just a few steps you have to really make sure that you do and then uh, you're good to go. And then after that, you can pretty much just go ahead and uh, let's say you want to start doing some mixing and mastering, then you can just go ahead and uh, start loading up any of your uh, mixing plugins that you have, compressors, limiters, that sort of thing. And then, uh, and then that's it, you're pretty much set up. All right, so that pretty much wraps up setting up a reference track in Cubase. And like I said, once you have this set up, you don't have to worry about it. And it's pretty much ready to go every time you go to start setting up a new mix or working on a track in Cubase. So if you found this video useful, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of our future content for future libraries, walkthroughs, in the studios with different composers and much more. So until next time, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.